Hey, what's up guys? It's Oakley, and we're we'll playing Empire. I'm going to be playing as Sweden. My opponent is Austria. So, this is going to be an interesting battle played out uh, rather tactically. Um, and because it's kind of a long battle, it'll be interesting, but I'm going to supplement this with uh, a bit of talk of Swedish military tactics during the Great Northern War. So, let's go ahead and just cover the battle aspect of this first. So, I'm going to be pushing up super aggressively, um, and that will ring a bell soon when we talk about Swedish tactics. So my Light Dragoons are going to go ahead and try and seize these early positions. So I have one Light Dragoon there, another pushing up the center, and then another on the far left flank, just trying to secure the um, key positions up at the top. It is a ridge map, so you, you definitely want to secure those. Over on my left flank, what I have here is going to be two line infantry and two riflemen. Quickly charging up. My riflemen want to get up there quickly, just like the cavalry, want to have initial control up there. And then my line infantry is going to be saving itself for the key parts of the battle. Over in the center, I have three line infantry to hold up the main approach. And these guys are going to be at the charge. Uh, I have no light infantry coupled with them just yet, so I want to make sure that they are in position. They're going to be the crux of my main battle line. We'll go ahead and cover the enemy force soon. Up through the center here, I have riflemen charging forward. They could be a little bit exposed by enemy uh, light... Or no, sorry, this is my light dragoon. I almost freaked out right there. Yeah, so my guys are come back in. They had initially screened the enemy force. Didn't take too, uh, any losses at all. But yeah, they're just helping me secure this position. Up here, riflemen, again, hidden in the force. And I'm once more pushing up with some infantry columns. Let's go ahead and take a look at the Austrian player who's pushing up here. He, uh, as opposed to me, has kept a lot of his cavalry in reserve. So three light dragoons here. Three Light Dragoons here, so in total I think I have three or four Light Dragoons. He has six, so he has that advantage over me. The Austrian line also is larger than the Swedish line. You'll notice my guys, um, let's see if I can get, yeah, or, yeah. My line's 120 men, his 150, so he took more cab and he can compensate for the lack of infantry just with larger units, so Austrian infantry moving up there. He has some Grenzer, he's going to be putting a lot of pressure up through the center, um, so he's moving up with his line infantry right through there. My guys have set up stakes. I want to start to get the initial volleys against these guys. Clipped about 15 of them in that first engagement. And now he's going to prepare for a follow-up volley. I'm going to, you know, there you go. Got right out of position behind the cusp of this hill. Set up stakes so he couldn't counter charge me. But yeah, I just want to get the initial volleys and then retreat on out of there. Did a similar thing over here with my light dragoons. Got a nice volley against... Yeah, some of his guys did a little bit more clipping damage right there and then retreated. So... I'm being very cautious with my approach. He has a lot of these Grenzers forming up, so I'm going to get the initial shots off, move in with my line infantry up through the forest here. He claimed the forest in the center, which means I have to pull back. He's starting to get some early shots with his Grenzers in the woods, um, so I'm going to have to pull these Light Dragoons out. Um, I'm mostly going to be masked by the hill. You can see it's the rare shot that will sneak through there, um, and I'm waiting to perhaps have a counter charge. Right through this position, I've got great cover in the forest, so I can get some effective shots. His Grenzers are also going to be firing kind of into the um, yeah, you can see they're mostly shooting into the terrain right there, so I'm getting the best of the engagements that I can using the terrain to cover me and pulling out of engagements where I don't need to be. I'm going to start shuffling my troops around. Over in the center, I'm still getting clipped with some of his shots right there, so I'm going to pull my units out of position. I didn't know he could continue to get shots on me. It looks like they were completely covered. Um, and yeah, I'm going to have riflemen on the side just to try and get some flanking shots. But you can see this little um, lip in the ridge is going to make it so that we can't really fire at each other through here. That's fine. He has most of his infantry presence in the center. So I'm going to try and push the flank. And uh, yeah, here starting to chip away at his guys. I'm down to 96. He's down to 90. Mostly because he has additional fire. But I have more men to feed into that fight. Over here with my riflemen. Um, kind of out of range of his uh, Windbush Jaegers. His Jaegers have more range than me. But... Again, they have a poor firing position. So I guess at this point, the battle is kind of starting to stagnate. So let's talk a bit about Swedish military tactics. So, like I said, I wanted to talk about the Great Northern War. That was between 1700 and 1721. So that's about the time that the uh, Empire game itself starts, where if you play as Sweden, um, you start off with a pretty big kind of swath of territory. So during this time, Sweden had started to form an empire. And they were led by Charles, Charles the Twelfth. So during the uh, Great Northern War, they were kind of taken on by a coalition that was led by, uh, you had Russia, Denmark, Norway, and Saxony initially. And when you take a look at the manpower of Russia, historically they have a lot to throw into the fight. And yes, Sweden is large, but it doesn't have much in terms of manpower. So in order to have any form of a chance, the Swedes had to do something about their tactics. 
they had to somehow be able to wither the storm of the enemy fire and somehow get an advantage. So the way they did this is kind of what I'm doing right through here. They were highly, highly aggressive. Those were their tactics. So in terms of infantry tactics, usually the, uh, the way to operate in infantry tactics for most uh, armies was to go ahead and form up in ranks, fire at about 100 meters, and then continue to fire until one side was whittled away and lost. So what the Swedes actually decided to do is they changed this. Their infantry were going to be highly aggressive, same with their cav, but in terms of the infantry, the infantry basically were going into battles with plans not to fire, uh, sorry, not to reload. So their tactic essentially was to form in these battalions. The battalions would have been about four men deep and 150 men or so uh, wide. These huge battalions would then advance briskly against the opponents. The enemy, as I said, usually had a typical range of about 100 meters where you would start to fire. Now that's not effective musket range, that's just kind of when you can start to get your first shots off. Most of the shots are going to miss, but you're getting the battle going slowly. The Swedes were not about getting the battle going slowly, because if they got into a battle of attrition, they would lose, again, as I said, against numerically superior forces. So what they did is they, was, they would approach uh, rather briskly with their battalions. They would have to you know, bear the brunt of that initial enemy assault. They would let the enemy fire at them from about 100 meters. Um, but like I said, that effective range of musketry was not super good, so the Swedes would push on through that initial um, volley. They wouldn't take too many losses. The enemy would then be forced to reload, Reload rates during that time were about a, a minute to two minutes, so the Swedes basically at 100 meters would then start to approach much more quickly. They would then close to uh, roughly about uh, um, 70 paces away at first. So for instance, if this is my force here, you know, let's say that's 100 meters, the enemy is getting shots off at me, now they're starting to reload at, you know, one to two minute rate. What the Swedes would do is advance rapidly with their battalions close the distance to, uh, let's say, about here. So they would first, with their infantry battalions, get close to about 70 paces away. The front two ranks would then fire. After the front two ranks fired, they wouldn't reload. They would you know, pull out their um, swords. The rear two ranks would then charge past the first two ranks, which had just previously fired. The rear two ranks would continue to advance while the enemy is still reloading. They would get up to 20 paces away from the opponents. You'd see, you know, this is about 20 paces away. At 20 paces away, they would fire their second volley. So there, at this point, the entire battalion has fired its volleys. They would then all draw their, uh, you know, fixed bayonets, draw their rapiers, or even some of them had pikes, and the entire unit would charge. So that is brutally devastating. Uh, in later times, they would, you know, advance the, 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 the clock on this, where their forces, instead of advancing at a brisk march, would instead actually run into battle. And they would change up the paces from being a one volley at 70 paces to 20 paces. They would change this up to being the first volley at 20 paces and the second volley at 10 paces. Uh, 10 paces, ladies and gentlemen, is approximately this close. So when you're firing this close, at an opponent, you are going to for sure cull their ranks. All your shots are going to be extremely accurate. The enemy force here, I mean, you know, this is what you're looking at when you see a Swedish force. This rank here would be reloading, and you see an enemy firing at you, you know, from that far. These, then you see another group charge even closer to 10 paces, fire at you. You see them all fix bayonets while you're still reloading, and then they come and they charge directly into you. So, those Swedish tactics ridiculously aggressive, resulting in ridiculous kills. Um, so for example, at the battle uh, in 1709 of Frostat, there were 9,400 Swedes against 20,000 Russians. So most of the Great Northern War, they would be fighting at a disadvantage numerically. So for example, like at this battle, I said the there were 9,400 Swedes and 20,000 Russians. Using their extremely aggressive tactics, the Swedes were able to inflict 15 thousand casualties approximately on the Russians while only taking a tenth of that so 1500 losses on the Swedish side that is ridiculous uh, in terms of the efficacy of their tactics and that's how they were able as a as a military power to punch above their weight class and really hold out in terms of these coalition battles uh, it, it also wasn't just about the uh, infantry they would also have very aggressive cavalry tactics Speaking a little bit about the battle itself here, I'm starting to wrap around these flanks using my Light Dragoons to push these formations. I'm trying to pressure my opponent here. I pushed out aggressively in the forest, tried to close ranks. My depleted infantry lines were sent to 
attack the enemy force, suppress them, allow my other ranks to get in close. So we're doing a good move on this side, closing out on his flanks, doing a lot of pressure. Right through here, I forced the enemy back. In the center, I've continued to yield and just hold at a at a, at a distance. And over on this flank here, I'm also denying the enemy. So I'm forcing the flanks rather aggressively, um, just being inspired by the Swedish tactics I talked to you about. And my heavy cav is waiting here to perhaps execute a charge. The enemy with a lot of his light dragoons is forced to swivel around from one side of the battlefield to the other. And what I do simply is if he has overwhelming numbers, I'm going to pull back here. Anyways, anyway, uh, since we have cavalry on the field right here, let's talk a bit about cavalry. So cavalry would have often at this time been armed with, you know, pistols and some rifles or muskets like this. Um, actually, probably muskets. Um, but anyways, they would the traditional tactic for these uh, black powder armed um, units would have been to form what's called a caracal. So what they would do is advance towards the enemy force, start to form in a revolving circle. So let's pretend my camera is a cavalry force. They would fire their pistols when they got, or their weapons when they got to this point, and then continue to go around in this kind of merry-go-round. As they're going around in this circle, they would be reloading, reloading, reloading. Then once they get back into the position, they would fire again. So in that way, when you have a whole unit circling around in this caracal, you continue to fire upon the enemy. So you have uh, continuous fire, which is pretty good. The Swedes, once again, uh, flip that on its head. And what they decided to do is, again, not decide to not only not decide decide not to reload it, but decide not to fire. So what they would do is form their cavalry units in about three or two ranks deep, extremely close. They would have been actually um, cavalry would have been basically knee to knee, so very dense formations. It would, they would form in kind of a wedge. So if you imagine this kind of wedged out a bit, what they would do is they would form in these dense formations, start at a trot, get close to the enemy force, the enemy force would be doing that wheeling cavalry operation, firing steadily, so they would you know, start to hit a couple men, but this unit, once it got within effective musket range, would then burst into a charge, huge dense charge like this, and just bowl over anything in front of them. Like I said, they were given orders not to fire, and they would actually save their fire for when the enemy force was wavering or even breaking, and then fire once they were basically, once again like the infantry, in point blank range. They saved the, the shots for for the pursuit and all that. So extremely effective tactics, combine extra aggressive cavalry with aggressive infantry, and you could you know have huge shock to enemy forces, and shock and morale is a huge part of winning any battle. So. Uh, the Swedes had that advantage going for them, um, but like I said, they were pretty much outclassed, or sorry, outnumbered in every battle, uh, and so they would have had these aggressive tactics, allowing them to have ridiculous um, win rates in the face of adversity. So, for example, the Battle of Narva, they only took 1,900 casualties, and they inflicted 9,000 killed against the Russians, um, and they captured 20,000 Russians. So. You know, they were able to fight that uphill battle, but they couldn't sustain it at the end of the day. You know, even if they took some losses, it would eventually add up in a battle of attrition. Um, and so that's why eventually the uh, Swedish force lost. So yeah, I hope you guys enjoyed a little bit of a spotlight of the Swedish tactics. It's not something that you see covered too much, and it's not something that you see represented in this game at all. So I was hoping to uh, bring that to your attention. Anyways, I'm going to be reinforcing with my lifeguard foot. Excellently equipped right through there. So I'm going to be charging up into a close position. Again, trying to be hyper aggressive here. The enemy force was caught reloading, so I'm going to do this charge with the bayonet, hoping that these guys would break. And then I'm going to also charge right through here, just to tie these forces down, bring my general in for some close support, and then push this flank with my guys. I charge in with my heavy cavalry against these light dragoons. So I'm starting to do some damage, but uh, perhaps not the, the best engagement there. They kind of overwhelmed me and shot me to pieces, but it gave me enough, you know, it relieved the pressure from his cavalry, allowing me to, again, push up aggressively through here. So infantry to tie down this position in the woods. My general is even being engaged in that fight to try and turn the tide against these Austrian infantry. And then I'm going to move up with my Swedish line, combine fire against his guys over here. I'm breaking some of his cavalry. So... Over in this position, I'm going to start to bring back my line infantry. I've seized the force, so I'm going to start to clip his Windebush Jaegers and line infantry who are very tired. And over here, I'm going to continue to hold this um, this force that has more men than me. So you can see he has two line infantry, three cav. I have three cav, so those are even. Uh, one line infantry matches this one. So basically, these are two units here that I am you know, forcing him to, to waste 
um, in a standoff against my guys and another win to Bushiegar. So that allows me to get some numerical superiority in other places. Looks like my push up in the woods went pretty well. I was able to force these guys back. Did take some pretty high losses with these uh, guards afoot, but I wanted to at least secure the uh, wood position. And then I'm going to fire from within the woods because firing within the woods is going to give me an advantage. So I wanted to claim, reclaim the key areas. His cavalry did come back up from mopping up my men over there and got back into my guys. Now previously I had used my heavy cav. You can see some of their bodies littering the field. I had done a nice charge against his infantry. You can see a lot of kills that I got. So my heavy cav was not just wasted here. It got some nice strikes against his infantry. My opponent then staked up these positions so I couldn't push any further, but they get a lot of nice kills through there. Then came back around and tried to deal with his light dragoons, but these guys ended up um, kind of finishing off my heavy cab, which means I can't push up in this position anymore. So now I'm going to have to be, you know, forcing the issue here. And like I said, once I seize this woods with my uh, precise platoon fire, I was able to destroy that line infantry. My opponent's going to get the idea that he needs to put a lot of pressure against my guys. He knows how effective I can be in the woods. And so here he comes with his militia, charging in against my guys, perhaps having learned from the Swedes. I'm going to form up into square, because usually I find squares are very effective at repelling infantry charges. So, I'm going to try and repel this. I figured against the militia I should be able to win, but he's bringing in other forces way close. Um, and now he's going to get some nice shots against me. I'm going to form up, taking advantage of his guys being distracted here. Yep. Threaten the flank, gonna force those guys back, relieve the pressure on my lifeguard foot. And then allow me to start to get some shots off on his light dragoons who would love to push through here. I'm gonna get um, some return volleys against them, kind of vengeance against what they did to my heavy cav. So here they go, reloading their shots. And in the face of my shots, I'm gonna reform, try and present, you know, um, my main lines over here. I'm going to force them back onto their side. So there you go. The pressure on my flank has been relieved. I can now pivot over with my line infantry. Deal with this threat. Over through the front, I tried to charge in with my general just to pose a little bit of a danger. But it looks like my lifeguards are actually very tired, whereas his guys are just tired. So that's going to be an advantage to him. I was hoping to break through these um, enemy militia much more quickly. I think it was perhaps... Not the best choice to form up at the square. I just do that out of habit, but uh, maybe it's not the best idea. I probably should have charged all out. Um, so yeah, I was hoping to shatter this, then charge through his Grenzers, then charge through with these guys, help me to push this flank. Looks like that type of uh, momentum is not really materializing. That's why I have my general here to hopefully execute some sort of a charge. Over through the center, being, again, kind of aggressive. My line infantry pushing forward. I want my light dragoons here also. They've been in the back reloading some of their shots, so they should be able to get a volley off. Yep, going to get some volleys against these guys and then charge straight through. Uh, my, my opponent's going to um, actually sack his Windabush Jaegers to guard these guys as they reload. He's trying to buy time. But I'm going to keep charging right on through, carving through uh, these guys. So this is pretty effective. I broke that one rank, but here comes his Light Dragoons. They pulled out of that position, came back to reinforce this side. Um, so yeah, it looks like he's actually going to start to break my Light Dragoons here with the additional fire, covering fire of these, these Light Dragoons, uh, the vicinity of his general. I'm going to take advantage of that and push through the forest here with my general, broke the militia, I'm going to break the Grenzers, and I have overwhelming fire against these guys, position these line infantry to ward off his cavalry. So you can see engagements happening all over the place. Looks like my Light Dragoons were defeated with the... Um, you know, additional firepower of these Light Dragoons, always a very good force to plug the gaps. I brought back in my line infantry here. I don't want to necessarily engage too closely. It's just enough to pour on the fire. And here goes my opponent with these very maneuverable Light Dragoons. That's the advantage of having so many of them, is now they can come back and reinforce these positions. So right when I thought I had an advantage here, he's going to charge right through my guys. Get some volleys point blank and then charge into melee against my unit. That is going to end up being devastating. So all throughout this battle, my opponent has done a good job of shuffling around his cavalry. Um, doing well with his ranks. My general is now free and he's going to decide to go in for a, uh, a general brawl. Decide to do a duel in the middle of the battlefield. Um, at least be honorable. I was hoping to perhaps get lucky and kill his gen. Uh, and... In doing so, perhaps start to shatter his morale in places like this and here. Um, and again, I'm just doing a face-off here, holding back a lot more of his guys than would otherwise be necessary. 
But looks like the um, cowardly enemy general is going to be reinforced by some of his own troops. So you can see him here. Let's see if he ends up going down. But yeah, it's a little bit of an unfair duel at this point once they threw in um, some reinforcements. So I was a little bit pissed about that. But I mean, what are you going to do? Um, my lifeguard foot now able to engage with his line. However, those guys are eager and winded. And there you go. My general actually was killed in this engagement. The enemy general, I'm not quite sure where he ended up. But, uh, yeah, here he is. So he's still alive. Pulled out of that engagement um, relatively. Yeah, I had taken him down to half strength. Had it not been for, you know, two full units, I may have taken him out. Um, but there goes the pride of the Swedish army right here. Um, basically starting to crumble with those final losses. I do still have a Light Dragoon force here, but it's shaken um, with the news of the general being killed. They're going to go ahead and retreat on out of here. Continue to reload. I'm going to seek a better opportunity to land a, a strike against my opponent. I'm going to pull back to my um, position right here. I'm going to pull back through the stakes just a little bit. I was hoping to, to force the enemy to pursue with Cav, and I'm trying to see if I can't get... Yeah, here I'm going to pull back with my other Light Dragoon force. Hoping to get some return shots against his Grenzers and then pull on out of there. Um, I think better of that because his cavalry here can quickly and swiftly move against me. This whole force here not launching the pursuit. So I'm going to try and rally some of my men through here. This Light Dragoon unit broke. I was really hoping it would return because it's still very healthy. Um, and yeah, these are the, the remains of my force with the vicinity of my troop. It's going to bring these guys a little bit back from, from routing. Um, but, uh, yeah, it looks like the enemy cab is now going to start to be activated. Um, I knew he was going to come in for a charge, so what I wanted to do was line up nicely here. Try and get a volley against his men. It looks like I wasn't fully reloaded. So we're going to get an engagement up through the center. And around the rear, he's going to be charging in with his light dragoons. Saber is drawn. And yeah, they're going to stab down at my men. So that is going to be the end of the battle, essentially. Still have my Light Dragoons doing pretty well. 52 against 32. I should win that fight, but again, these dishonorable Austrian players trying to overwhelm me. You will never overwhelm Sweden. Kind of rallying, a little bit. <laughs> I was really... Ah, oh, here we go. Looks like this, uh, this unit came back. I'm not sure if I'm going to uh, realize that just yet, but had this force not run all the way back yeah there you go i'm trying to pull it back had it not retreated i could have had it here to you know reinforce this position could have beat back these light dragoons landed some volleys then after that could have you know mass charged this guy would have probably gone after the general maybe would have killed these line infantry um but i think the the main threat is he has two um light dragoon forces and some infantry remaining over there so yeah things are not going well for me what I'm going to decide to do is pull back my Light Dragoons through this position here. My own stakes don't do damage to me. But I knew that the opponent um, would try and pursue. So I was trying to bait him into my own stakes. Not necessarily going to work. But here comes my <laughs> once routing Light Dragoons unit. Going to get back into the fight. And with two of my guys here, the odds are going to be a little bit more in my favor. Uh, this guy here shattered somehow with 33 men. Um, so now the odds swinging once again in my opponent's favor. Um, not going super well for me uh, at this point. Um, and yeah, it's it's just a kind of a token fight right now. Where he's, he's not really pulling anything over. He's like, okay, I'll send some reinforcements if I can. So overall, my opponent played very, very well. We didn't get to cover too much of the tactics, uh, deep analysis of the battle. I think we covered most of it. I think the more interesting part is talking about the Swedish tactics. Aha, here, see, that's exactly why I had pulled back to that position. Knowing that reinforcements would get killed <laughs> at the stakes right there. So I was counting on that to do some more damage. You see he lost a third of his guys. Um, still doesn't seem enough. He breaks my force and there goes my uh, Swedish army. Looks like no one else has come back from the fight. So attrition ended up killing me here. Um, I actually ended up not killing too many of his men. I think just the... Let's actually take a look at the unit stats. I'd be curious. Yeah, my lifeguard's doing well. Line infantry doing pretty well. I think it may have been my light dragoons who maybe underperformed uh, a little bit. Yeah, my heavy cav here not doing too well. And one of my riflemen, I think, just got run down. Um, so, could have done a little bit better. But I think at the end of the day, it was a very closely fought battle where I seized the high ground. He pushed against me. 
um, and I tried to do my best to win engagements on the flanks. It went pretty well, but I think his maneuverable cavalry helped shoot me to pieces. Uh, he brought six of these Light Dragoon Cav, which is kind of the meta in Empire. You always see the rules capped at usually six Cav, um, and people are always going to bring six Light Dragoons. They're excellent at, you know, obviously reinforcing positions, charging, breaking through positions. You can feint a charge, force the enemy into square, and then shoot them up, retreat, let your line infantry do their thing. So I was trying to I, I try and break the mold and do different things. Went more for heavy infantry, uh, riflemen, line infantry, things like that. Uh, but mostly I just wanted to talk a bit about Sweden, so I'm glad this gave me the opportunity to do so. Anyways, hope you guys enjoyed. I will see you guys in the next one. Peace out.